Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I bring you greetings this morning from Christ Temple Cathedral, where we exist to connect people to Jesus Christ and to one another. Definitely hope that you enjoy our Sunday worship services this morning. Um, and we also hope that you tune in to our Sunday school hour starting at 9.30 a.m., where we'll have a great time learning about wisdom. And we also want to ask that if you would continue to give to Christ Temple, and you can do it in several ways. You can go to our website, which is ChristTempleLA.org, or you can just drop your tithes or your offering off at our church. We pray that you are blessed by this message that will be given by our pastor, Bishop Emery Lindsay, and we pray that you have an amazing week in the Lord. Thank you.
I welcome you to the ministry of the Word at Christ Temple Church in Los Angeles, California. The Word of God will not return void, but it will indeed accomplish the purpose that God has. Today, I would invite your attention to 1 Kings chapter 2. 1 Kings chapter 2. Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statues, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do, and wherever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, charge to men. On this Father's Day, I am indeed very, very delighted to honor and salute and celebrate all of the fathers. Fathers, we are very grateful to God for you and all that you are in our lives. We celebrate your love, your support, your guidance. We celebrate your encouragement. We would like to do today what the Bible says ought to be done for parents. We ought to honor our father and our mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And I truly hope that your family today makes this a very special day for you and that they assure you that they are grateful for all that you are and for all that you mean to them as the father in the home. I'd like to speak to fathers in particular and men in general. And yet, having said that, when we open the word of God, there is always a word for everyone, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Many times when I read the LA Times, I stop at the obituary. And when I stop at the obituary page, I usually find someone's life story that is interesting. This past week, there were a couple of men that I took special note of. They had, very, they had lived both very long lives and very interesting lives. They were men who had come from very modest backgrounds, but they rose up and they became quite successful as men in the world. Well, I'd like to lead us to a Bible example of a man who became a very successful man. There is no better example of a man who had a very modest and humble beginning than King David. He started out almost hidden in his family's life. He was the shepherd lad, a job that was given to the least in the family. But even though David started out in a very humble way, a little behind and considered very much a nobody, he would rise to the top and become the greatest king that Israel ever had to sit on the throne. The Bible has more of David's life and story in the Holy Scriptures than anyone apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. David was quite the man. David was a man who had seen life at its best and he had seen life at its worst. He had experienced the lowest and the highest of life's experiencing. He started out as this little shepherd lad tending to the few sheep of his father and family, a man who spent most of his life out in the wilderness, out in the field, isolated and alone. But this man would rise from those very lowly beginnings to become the king of one of the great nations of all time, the nation Israel. He would become not the shepherd of the sheep in the field, but the shepherd of a nation. He was one of Israel's greatest warriors. He became their greatest poet. 
Yes, David, who had stepped from obscurity into the spotlight, a young man who had conquered giants and nations, he was without parallel among all the kings of Israel. In chapter 2 of 1 Kings, this mighty man, this mighty leader who had risen and who to come to great power and great prominence in the life of Israel, a man of great action. But now this man is on his deathbed. He has come to the end of his days and he has some final words to share with his son Solomon. David has time now to express these final words to his son Solomon. And he says to his son Solomon, I am going to go the way of all the earth. And that expression is best understood as David said, life is like a journey. And it's like walking down a long road. David is now able to see the end of that road and David realizes that death is at the end. But there are some things that he needs to say. There's some unfinished business that he needs to take care of. He wants to make a final deposit in the life of his son, Solomon. Before he could die in peace, there are some things that he wanted to go on record, some words that he must leave to his son who would soon ascend to the throne and follow in his father's footsteps. He didn't want his son to waste his life. And it's so often true that we live forward and we learn backwards. David now had time to look back over his life and think about the lessons that life had taught him. And I suppose on this Father's Day in 2020, I sort of identify with David. David had been blessed with many sons. I am blessed with one son who is an amazing man, a son who is very gifted academically and athletically, He's a son that would make any father proud. A son who is renowned for his dedication to his family, loving his wife and cherishing his children. His example is so inspiring and refreshing. But not only do I have one son, I also have seven grandsons. And as I travel further down this road of life and know that soon I too must go the way of all flesh, for none of us can live always. We all come to the end of our road sooner or later. As the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die. And none of us can escape that appointment. So while I am among the living and the breathing, I would like to say this to my son, to every man, really, but in a special way, to my son and to those seven grandsons. I'd like to share with them some wisdom that I have gleaned along the way and the wisdom that comes from Scripture and some wisdom that comes from Solomon and to David as he speaks to David, as King David speaks to him, knowing that his time draws near. David says to his son Solomon, be strong and show yourself a man. And I think we need to let these words sink in. We need to pause right there. Be strong and show yourself a man. In some ways, the world in which we live, it seems to be bent on seeking to feminize men Men have become rather soft and namby-pamby. And we want to masculize women who are often shown as being very hard and very tough. It may be my age or it may be the fact that I was raised around my father, grandfather, and my grandfather's seven sons. And I just believe that men ought to be strong. Men ought to be courageous and bold and risk takers. We need to have men who are not wimps and who whine, but men who step up to the challenge and live up to their responsibilities. Men who are willing to stand up and be counted. Men that should 
love and lead and be loyal to their wife and to their families. David's last word to Solomon as Solomon is to, about to inherit the throne and the responsibility of leadership in Israel, David knows that the way is not going to be easy. He knows that the challenges are going to be many. He knows that there's going to be opposition and obstacles to overcome. There are enemies from within the kingdom and enemies without the kingdom that must be dealt with and defeated. There are people that must be loved and cared for. And so knowing that the challenges are so many in the days ahead for his son Solomon, he says to his son Solomon, be strong and show yourself a man. Because to lead a family, to lead a nation, to lead an army, it's a man-sized job. And if it's one thing our community needs today, we need some men who will stand up. We need some black men who will show up. We need some men who will not only make a child, but men who will hang in there and be a father for that child. Men who are willing to be counted and take responsibility. Men who are willing to provide leadership for themselves and their family. Because as the man goes, so goes the family. As the family goes, so goes the church. As the church goes, so goes the community. As the community goes, so goes the city. As the city goes, so goes the state. And as the state goes, so goes the nation. That's why the role of the man is so pivotal. We need men who will stand up and be counted. Men, show yourself a man. Be what a man should look like. Some places would tell us that a man, to be a man is to have as many sexual conquests as possible, to have are uh, women all over the town and around to sow your seed anywhere and everywhere. In some places, that's how they define manhood. Some other places, they would tell you that we define manhood by having a successful career, by being one who's able to provide well for your family, to do well for yourself materially, this is what makes you a man. Some other places would tell you that if you are a man, you are into the whole world of sports. And that's how you define manhood, by your athletic prowess. If you play ball, you know how to really play ball. If you are into sports, you are really into sports, and that becomes your whole world. This is what men do. Well, King David could step back and say, I've had my relationships with women. He had not only wives, but he had concubines. David had had career success, career success beyond anyone's wildest imagination. After all, he had risen through the ranks and he had become the king of the nation Israel. David would go down in history as one of Israel's greatest warriors. Therefore, David knew about physical strength and manhood in terms of physical ability and agility. David was one who had fought giants and bears and lions, and he had conquered. David had the physical trophies to show and to display. And I expect David would tell any man today, in our effort to discover what it means to be a man, David would be able to say, if we were to compare notes with what's commonly thought of as the things that men would do, David would say, been there, done that, got the t-shirt to prove it. Because David had been a man among men, a mighty warrior, a great king, a father, a husband, a leader for his nation. But David wraps up his life and he pours into his son words that stand the test of time. 
And David says to his son Solomon, live for God. Stand upon his word. Put God at the center of your life. David says very specifically, keep the charge of God. And I hear those words being echoed, echoed by our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. David is saying to Solomon, keep first things first. Make that relationship with God the relationship that is above all others. Keep the charge to know God, to walk with Him, to love Him, to serve Him, honor Him, walk in His ways, obey His word, keep His statutes, obey His testimonies, be governed by His judgments. In everything you find in the law of Moses, do it. Hide the word of God in your heart and do it. Know God's word and obey it. If you want the key to success and prosperity, if you want to pass the kingdom on to your son, then serve God with all of your heart. Because as you make God first in your life, as you make God at the center of your life, you will be blessed in all of your doings. You will be blessed in your going in and in your coming out. David's life bore witness to a life that had the hand of God's blessing upon it because God blessed David in every dimension of his life. He blessed him in his family. He blessed him with fame and fortune and finances and friends. Everything that everywhere David turned, God made him the head and not the tail. God blessed David because David blessed God and honored God with his life. These are the words that David wanted to deposit in the life of his son as he's about to leave his life, the life that he had experienced on earth and would soon be into the presence of God the Father, David says to his son Solomon, keep the charge of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. What would I say to my son this morning and to my seven grandsons as I travel further down this road of life? Keep the charge of God. Make God first in all that you do. And walk in the ways of God. Love him. Because as you love him, you will be a better father. You will be a better man when you place God at the forefront of all that you do. David is about to exit the scene, and David knows that you will not come up short when you put God first in your life. Yes, there are many things that are important in life, our partner in life is important. That wife that we should have, that we are to love as Christ loves the church, that's so important. Providing for your family is so important because the Bible says a man who won't take care of his family is worse than an infidel. Protecting your family is a part of your responsibility as a man. Your presence in the home is important. You need to be there for your children. You need to be there for your wife. You need to be available. You need to be a listening ear. You need for her to have your heart and where she can trust in you. But the priority above all priorities, the priority above having a partner, above protection, above uh, providing, the highest priority if you want the blessing of God 
If you want to be all that you can be, make knowing God your priority and walking in his will and within his word. Know him. Worship him without apology. Serve him. Obey his word. Exalt him in the life that you live and give him glory. There's something about making God first in your life that when you make God first in your life and when you obey him and his word, other things fall into their proper place. David says to his son Solomon, he says, if your sons will take heed concerning this word and walk before the Lord God in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, then God gives to David and to David's son a blessing. You shall always have a man from your family to sit on the throne of Israel. And God still gives blessing to men who honor God, to fathers who will lift up Christ in their home, because as the man goes, so goes the home. I want to challenge any man this morning who is hearing my voice to let God be first in your life. You'll be a better man when you humble your heart before the true and living God. And so today I would invite you that if you have never trusted Christ, if you have never invited Christ into your life, I would invite you this morning to confess I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And because I'm a sinner and I need a Savior, I realize that Christ died for my sins and only Christ can save me. And therefore, I'm willing to come to Him today to confess my sin, to repent of my sin, and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to allow Him to be Lord of my life and from this point on to go forth to serve Him and to love Him and to lift Him up in my life. Let me pray with you this morning. O oh Lord my God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And I pray that this word would fall on good ground and may some man today, some boy today, someone today realize that I need to trust Christ. I need to believe on him. I need to confess my sin and turn from them and let Jesus be the Lord of my life. Oh God, I pray for every father. I pray that if you have been half-stepping, that you will step up to the plate and that you will be all that God would have you to be. I say to my son and to my seven grandsons, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and the blessing of God will follow your life both now and always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Precious.